What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for April 29th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a somber Monday edition of the podcast. They did it to me again. I knew it was going to happen. But first, let's start with a recap of yesterday's question of the day. And boy, were we all wrong. 100% of you said the Sixers were going to win the game. It doesn't even matter at this point. As always, thank you for participating in the question of the day. There'll be another one in a few minutes later on in the show. 97, 92, and yep, I fell for it. I knew it was going to happen. I absolutely knew. And I I will be honest, this is going to be a little inconsistent today just because I'm struggling to, and again, I don't know if it's Stockholm Syndrome or what, but like I'm struggling to to compartmentalize what happened. Uh, So I'm just going to go with it. You you can't win a game with no field goals in the final five minutes. And the fact that the offense looked lost in the final five minutes. Nobody on that team, including Joe, knows how to close anything out. Um, With the exception of Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry, but then I don't know. I saw him say he was going to miss it. But I don't know if he told Tyrese and... I believe it was Ubre that he was going to miss it because they were unaware. I like I, I saw him say he's going to miss it, uh, but again, it, it shouldn't matter. Uh, the fact that they couldn't sub Joe down the stretch and he was gassed because every time you take him out of the game, uh, the, the Knicks like it, the plus minus is ridiculous for when Joe's in the game versus when he was out. Um, like Joe and Maxie really are the only players, that, and, and truthfully, they're the only players under contract for next year. Um, I, I don't know. Like, it, part of this is on Joe. Like, where was he at that final five minutes? He was gassed, I know. But that's when, if you are a star and, and you're worried about legacy and things like that, that's when you dig deep in and, and you find something. Uh, and it just wasn't meant to be. Everybody else looked scared. Like, it was like five Ben Simmons in the Hawks game on the court the last five minutes. And, and it was uh, like the, the game was there to be taken. It was only a five-point game. The Knicks couldn't make a shot either. Like it was just, it was there, but no hustle. You can't grab rebounds. Again, I fell for it, and damn, every time, every time. And honestly, the, the Sixers are the one team I just want to be good. And, and yes, Eagles, Phillies, all the Sixers, man. Every damn time, I fall for it. It's not completely over yet. Tomorrow night, game five, could be over. Um, but it doesn't matter. It's like two home games for the Knicks, too. And like uh, Joe was 100% correct. Like It was embarrassing, and it should piss him off. Um, I mean, I see the argument, well, if you make it. No, like that's bullshit. Don't sell your tickets. Like and, and Not for a playoff game. And I don't know, again, how it works with... NBA playoff tickets uh, versus the NFL because I know in for the Eagles there, there's so many season tickets there's usually not a ton of tickets available but man that that's embarrassing absolutely embarrassing Joe is absolutely right he should be pissed off uh, we need to be better as fans like that was just just absolutely ridiculous um, but yeah I, I mean if you're going to rip Joe today rip him for his play on the court rip him for disappearing the final five minutes don't rip him for his comments about being pissed off about the fans selling tickets to New- the Knicks fans he's 100% justified that is a joke an absolute just joke and, and I, I'm embarrassed and disappointed to be a Sixers fan because of that and then on top of the, the the play on the court, but that's a two separate issues. But yeah, he should be pissed off. You should be pissed off. I'm pissed off. It's embarrassing. Anyway, not over. Mathematically, they're still alive, and and theoretically, it's still alive too. Thirteen times uh, since they've gone to seven game or had seven game series in the NBA, a team has won. Being down three to one, actually the Sixers have blown two three to one leads, so it, it, it definitely has been done and hits close to home. Not likely, but it has been done. Uh, Twenty-two times, uh, Game Seven has been forced. Um, the Sixers have done that and lost Game Seven twice. Uh, the Knicks blew a three-one lead and also has gone to Game Seven. So the precedent is out there. Whether or not it gets there, I don't know. 
but I just completely, completely embarrassed, frustrated. And if you want to call up the clips from me a couple weeks ago saying, I know how this is going to end. I don't care. I care. Uh, man. It, it's frustrating. It is frustrating. But that leads to today's question of the day. Who is more to blame for the Sixers' failures during the process era of this team? Is it more on Embiid or is it the front office for not giving him players or, or choosing the wrong players to put around him? Um, we may or may not have seen the last of Tobias Harris in Philly, which uh, I'm completely fine if they do lose. See you later, Toby. Uh, but let me know. 267-495-8531. Who's more to blame? Joe or the front office? 267-495-8531. Get you in on the Back to the Future voice and text line. I, I, I got to go with the front office because they've never had a veteran leadership to kind of help him out. Like there's not been <clears throat> Kyle Lowry. Too little, too late at this point. Um, I don't know. Whose fault is it? Is it Joe or the, the front office? Just so frustrating. Be sure to follow me on my social media. Jim, um, Jimbo underscore Mont at TikTok and Twitter. It got me all messed up. I don't even know my own social media handles. At Philly Jimbo on Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's going to be a, a, a fun and long summer. Uh, Jimbo underscore Mont. Tell your friends. Subscribe. Do all that other good stuff. Quick housekeeping note. We will be doing uh, the family affair for May. We're going to talk about uh, athletes in Philly who either their brothers, their fathers, grandfathers, sons, uh, whoever played, including the 13 times that Philly had the wrong brother. So stay tuned for that in May. All right. At least one team right now in Philly knows how to win, and that is the Phillies 8-6. to six. Uh, Walker was decent in his return. He went six solid innings and then blew up in the seventh. Probably should not have gone back out there, especially since the bullpen was well rested. Luckily, the bullpen was able to shut it down. Bryson Stott hopefully is breaking out of his slump, hit two homers. Alec Bohm is red hot, extended his hitting streak to 12 games. Um, moving on to a three-game series against the Angels and Mike Trout. Uh, again, hate West Coast baseball, but this is where we're at. And then they come home. Game and a half, half back of the Braves. Uh, solid April for the Phils is just what they needed. They're not out of it yet. Like the, this time last year, they were out of the division race. So they're right there where they need to be. Good win for them. Swept the Padres looking to do the same against the Angels. Uh, it's good to see them do well against better competitions of teams, especially on the road. Um, but good win for the Phils, 8-6. Uh, Tawan Walker, want to see it again. And like, like I said, it was just that one inning, and he probably should not have been back out there for the seventh, all things considered, uh, coming back from the injury. And the bullpen is just well-rested, so he should have done that. But, hey, a win is a win. We'll take it. Help to get your the sadness, I guess, uh, of the Sixers out of your system. Go to phillygoat.com and do some retail therapy. They have the Philly Fanatic Feast Mode shirt, the Philly Connect line, uh, hats, jerseys, hoodies, T-shirts. Even get some shoes. I told you the, the shoes were a great hit uh, this weekend when we went out to dinner. Uh the only guys left on the Sixers for next year, if you want to start getting ready, is Joe and Maxi. They have a good line of Joe and Maxi shirts there. Just be sure to use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off. That's Jim Montgomery, all one word, at phillygoat.com for all of your Philly sports-based apparel needs. Retail therapy might make you feel better. Ugh, so frustrating. <clears throat> Eagles made a move yesterday. Uh, they signed Mekhi Becton, or will be signing Mekhi Becton, um, offensive lineman from the Jets, at the request of Jeff Stoutland. Jeff Stoutland really was instrumental in this, uh, thinks he has some talent and wants to work with him, provide some much-needed depth to the Eagles' offensive line. Uh, Becton has had some injuries histories, 
injury history in his career, uh, but did play all 16 games last year. And this is a solid, I like this pickup a lot. This is one of those under the radar moves that Howie makes that often gets overlooked, but you're going to add some depth to the offensive line. Uh, I'm ready for training camp, uh, especially with the way the Sixers are. And yes, I know it's only April, but I'm ready for training camp. Um, let's do this. But Makai Becton will sign with the Eagles. One year, $5.5 million. Again, I like this uh, because not only does it give the depth, but Jeff Stoutland wanted it. So if Jeff Stoutland says, I can do something with this guy, by all means, you give him a scholarship to Jeff Stoutland University. All right. Today, we're going to go back to 2017. And on this day in 2017, it was the final day of the NFL Draft which was held in Philadelphia down at the Art Museum. They put the stage at the top of the Rocky Steps. Uh, it was the first dra NFL draft to ever be held outdoors. It was the first time it was in Philly since 1961. The early days of the draft actually used to take place in – or the early days used to take place – I'll get it out – in Philadelphia. At the time, uh, on April 29th, 2017 – this was the most attended draft in NFL history, of course, being the first one outside. Uh, 250,000 people over the course of the three days. Um, since it has gotten bigger and more outrageous with where they do it and how they do it, which I actually like. I like the draft being outside. It helps spice it up a little bit. It was cool when it was in Philly. But this year in Detroit, 750,000 fans attended. Um, so they almost tripled, or not almost, they tripled in size. Uh, the 2017 draft in Philly set the record for most trades with 37. That has since been broken, uh, 40 in 2019. Howie Roseman did his part this year to try to break this record, but I think they were under 30 overall uh, when it was all said and done this year. The Eagles' picks uh, were uh, the first round pick was Derek Barnett. So Derek Barnett was the one that came out and uh, was introduced to the Philly crowd. Sidney Jones, Russell Douglas. Wasn't necessarily the Eagles' best draft, uh, but this was a pretty good draft overall for the NFL. Miles Garrett was the number one overall pick to Cleveland. Uh, Christian McCaffrey was drafted in this draft. Patrick Mahomes, TJ Watt, uh, all taken in the first round. And then Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, and Buda Baker in the second. Alvin Kamara and Cooper Cup in the third. George Kittle and our friend Jake Elliott were taken in the fifth round, as well as Aaron Jones. Um, Chad Kelly was Mr. Irrelevant, but most importantly, this was laid the blueprint for what you saw this past weekend in Detroit, where this is the first time they've done it outdoors, able to, to really incorporate the, the culture of the city uh, into the draft a lot, so... Uh, very successful draft, and the final day was this day back in 2017. Um, the draft took place in Philly. Did not get a chance to make it down there. Would have would have been cool to be down for one of the first days. I had an opportunity to go down for uh, day two, and I forget why. I think I just chickened out because I was like, I don't want to deal with all the traffic, especially when I'm like, I can watch it on TV and have a couple beers for much cheaper at home. Uh, but on this day in 2020 or 2017, the NFL draft concluded in Philadelphia, the first time it had ever been held outside and first time in Philadelphia since 1961. Oh, and don't forget, the last time the draft was in Philly, the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Uh, it's not coming back to Philly anytime soon, but last time of the draft, the draft was in Philly, they won the Super Bowl. Finally today, our Philadelphia sports team with unfinished business is the 1987-88 Temple Owls. They were 32-1 heading into the tournament. Ranked number one, the number one overall seed in the tournament. This was Mark Macon's freshman year. This team was stacked. Uh, their only loss in the regular season came to number eight UNLV, and even that was controversial. Uh, they ended up losing to Duke 63-53 in the Elite Eight. Shooting only 28.6%. Nobody could hit a shot that game against Duke. Um, but they played some good D and kept them, them in it. Uh, just an overall frustrating day for the Owls. They, nobody could hit a shot. If one person could hit a shot, that changes the whole complexion of that game. But you're not going to do it. Shooting 28.6%. Had they won that game, they would have went to the Final Four for the first time in John Chaney's career and maybe even changed, like he was a Hall of Fame coach, Hall of Fame man, but maybe changed somewhat the trajectory of his team. 
Uh, they would have played Danny Manning's uh, Kansas Jayhawks, coached by our own Larry Brown. Uh, they would have had a shot, I think, um, to beat them. Uh, just the way that Cheney's defense always uh, really uh, confused teams like that in the tournament, especially in a one-and-done. Then they would have played Oklahoma, who were led by Stacey King and Mookie Blaylock. Again, you never know what would have happened, but it was just not meant to be. Couldn't buy a bucket, much like the Sixers in the last five minutes of yesterday's game. But today's uh, Philly sports team that left a lot of meat on the bone and probably was John Chaney's. <clears throat> I don't know if this was his best chance or the 99-2000 team, but one of his best chances to finally get over the hump and get to the Final Four but alas, it was just not meant to be. They have unfinished business and just back when Temple basketball used to be good. All right, I'm trying to stay positive. It's just so many negatives. But today's Philly sports team with unfinished business is the 1987-88 Temple Owls. We have one more Philly sports team with unfinished business we'll get into tomorrow. And then we start. It's a family affair. Looking forward to that as well. On this day in 2017, the NFL draft concluded. It was the first draft in Philadelphia since 1961. First one outside. The Eagles selected Derek Barnett, who would have a key role that season in the Eagles winning the Super Bowl because he was the one that recovered Brandon Graham's uh, strip sack fumble of Tom Brady. Phil's in action late night out in California. Whose fault is it? Is it the front office or is it Joe? 267-495-8531. Get you in on the back to the future voice and text line. I I don't know. I, I mean, I, at this point, I don't know. I don't even know if it matters. But let me know what you think. I, I'm, I'm leaning toward the front office because they're, they're, he's never had anybody around him. Uh, and I, I don't know. Maybe the whole process like with the Doc Rivers. I mean, not the Doc Rivers should be talking about losing stenches at all but he said that it was a losing culture and that's all on the front office and, and the current front office and the current regime has done nothing to to sort of rectify that so i don't know game five tomorrow night 13 times it's happened could it be 14 doubt it but we'll see maybe they come out and shoot lights lights out and then who knows? Anyway, it's going to be a hot one today. Go out and enjoy. They did it to me again, and I apologize for being inconsistent and all over the place, but it's frustrating because the Sixers, like I said, they're that team that I just want to win. I just want a Sixers championship. Is that too much to ask? Apparently it is. Go have yourselves a Monday. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery, and until next time, I'll see you when I see you.